This question involves four gears. Gear A meshes with gear B. Gear B and gear C are rigidly attached. Gear C and gear D again mesh together. An angular velocity of five radians per second is applied to A, and we're asked to find the magnitude of the angular velocity of gear D with the following dimensions. So again, we're gonna start with a diagram first. So the diagram again is gonna involve um, gear A um, and uh, gear B, C, and D, which we'll draw all together as one. Okay, so we're gonna label these. This is gonna be gear A, gear C, gear B, and gear D. And this is um, where they spin about. Uh, so we know that gear A has an initial, or just an angular velocity omega A. This we're given, it's five radians per second, so we're gonna write it down. Omega A is equal to negative five radians per second in the k hat direction. And again, just to clarify, this is my coordinate system. X, Y, and rotation counterclockwise is positive, so this is why the omega has a negative sign. And then we're given the, the dimensions in um, here, so I'm not gonna rewrite them down. So what we're gonna have to do in this problem is we need to figure out the angular velocity of d, which is, I'm gonna draw in green, omega d. Um, so what we need is first, um, since we're given the, the um, angular velocity of a, we need to find the angular velocity of b because a and b mesh. And then since b and c are a rigid body, we can, they have the same angular velocity and then c and d again mesh together so we can get uh, the corresponding angular velocity. Um, so let's start with uh, the main assumption for this problem. And that is, the main assumption is that B and C uh, are rigid bodies. Um, and therefore this means that the angular velocity of B is gonna be equal to the angular velocity of C. And we'll use this later. Um, now let's focus back to the diagram. So given omega a, we can find uh, the tangential velocity at point a, b. So this point a, b is, is the point where um, a, gear a, and gear b mesh. Uh, and we can find that um, tangential velocity um, with um, the formula. So this we're gonna call v, a, b. With this linear velocity or tangential velocity, we can then solve for the angular velocity of um, gear B, so omega B. From omega B, we know that that is the same as um, the angular velocity in C. Um, and with that, we can solve for the velocity at CD. So we're gonna call CD. And from that, then we can solve for omega d. So redrawing it in the diagram above, we are given omega a. We're going to solve for the velocity here, which is uh, v a b. We're going to call this a b. Um, from this, we can find the angular velocity of gear b, which is also the same as the angular velocity of c. Um, and then from that, um, we can find the linear velocity where at point CD, where C and D mesh, we're gonna call this VCD. And from that, we can figure out the angular velocity of D. Now, you can also see that from this analysis that I just did here, um, I just, I also found the direction. Um, so um, since I drew this in the proper direction that's given, um, 
drawing all of these arrows, get, I drew the correct direction, and we can solve for the final direction of omega d. Again, this is not part of the question, but this is a way of reasoning to the um, uh, direction of the um, angular velocity without doing vector equations. But again, we will be doing vector equations just to show you how the problem is done. So three is going to be our solution. And the main formula that we're going to use is um, the formula relating uh, tangential velocity with um, omega, which is um, v equals to angular velocity cross product the radius or the distance. OK, uh, so we're going to start from gear A, work our way to gear B, then C, and then D. OK, so it's kind of the same process. So um, I'm going to first solve it um, with the vector equations, and then I'm going to show an alternate method that's derived from the vector equations uh, that is much simpler to use. Uh, so first, let's start at gear A. And from gear A, we're given the, uh, we know uh, the, um, we know omega the angular velocity, we need to solve for um, the radius. And so in this case, the radius um, is going to point towards the right. So it's going to start from the center with no velocity, no linear velocity, to um, our point where gears A and B mesh. Uh, and so we're going to call this uh, the radius of AB with respect to A. Okay, and so this is going to point to the right, so in the positive x direction. And um, so that's what we have for our radius. So again, radius of a v with respect to a is going to equal to one meter in the i hat direction, so in the positive x direction. And we can solve for v a b. So v a b is going to be equal to omega a cross of r of a b with respect to a. And this is going to be equal to um, negative 5 in the k hat direction cross to 1 in the i hat direction. And because negative 5 was our um, omega a. And if we solve this, we get negative 5 in the j hat direction. And this is going to be units of meters per second because this is a velocity. So this is, we've solved for vab, which is, again, the velocity between um, gear A and uh, gear B, so at this location here. Now we're going to solve, given this velocity here, we can solve for omega B. Okay, so we're just going to use the same formula that we used backwards um, at gear B. So at gear B, we have the radius of, again, AB with respect to B this time, because we're looking at gear B. Um, which, if I draw into the diagram, is going to look like this. Let me move this thing here back to where it's supposed to be. Um, so that's radius of AB with respect to B. In the center of B is, again, uh, this location here. Um, and so we can see that this is going to be in the negative uh, x direction, so in the negative i hat direction. And so um, let's write that down. And again, it's 3 because the radius of that gear is 3 meters. And so we can, again, write the same formula that we had before. Um, replacing um, omega a with omega b and radius of a with a b with respect to a to radius of a b with respect to b. So v of a b is going to be equal to omega b cross product r of a b with respect to b. Okay, and again these are all vectors, but um, that we know the quantities of. So um, in this case we don't know omega b. We know the velocity and we know the radius. Okay, so we know these two. Um, we're trying to find this. Uh, and um, so we're going to kind of work our way backwards um, through the cross product. Um, so let's do that. So I'm just going to write in what we know into the equation. So we know that negative 5 j hat is VAV from what we found above. And this is in meters per second. And it's going to be equal to omega b. 
and I'm going to add the direction to omega v. So omega v can only be in the k hat direction. Again, because this is a 2D problem, omega can only be either in the positive or negative k hat direction, so out of the page or into the page. Um, and so that gets rid of one unknown. Uh, and then we cross product this to negative 3 i hat. And this is, again, the radius of AB with respect to B. And given this, um, we can work our way back to solve for omega B over here. So um, what we can do is we can write the uh, cross product out over here. So I, J, K, um, zero, zero, omega B, and negative three, zero, zero. And so as you can see clearly from this cross product, um, what we get is, uh, so this is the right side of that equation that I just wrote down over here. Um, what we get is negative three omega b in the j hat direction. So we can simplify this equation over here to negative five j hat meters per second is equal to negative three omega b um, j hat meters per second. And then we can simplify this equation um, and solve for omega b. And so what we get is that omega b is equal to 5 over 3 radians per second. OK? Uh, so this is, uh, and this is omega b. This is not the final answer. We're, st we st we're still at omega b. Um, but what we can also write down is that this is omega c, right? From our assumption that these b and c are rigid bodies, omega b will equal to omega c because they spin together. Um, so we can also write down that this is omega c. And this is one way to get it with the vector equations, but I'm also going to show you an alternate method. This alternate method in involves um, the ratio of omegas and the ratio of the radii. Um, so for two gears meshing, um, the absolute value of omega b over omega a is equal to the ratio of the radii, radius of a over radius of b. And this can also be the diameters. It doesn't matter. Um, but this is the ratio of the dimensions, essentially. Uh, so what we can do is instead of doing all those vector equations, we can simplify this to uh, the magnitude of omega b being equal to uh, the magnitude of omega a uh, times the ratio of the radii. So r of a divided by r of b. And if we plug this in, so if we solve for omega b, it's going to be equal to, so this is again the absolute value. This doesn't give direction, the direction you'd have to find from uh, the diagram that I drew up here. Um, but um, it does give, give you the final value. So we have uh, omega a is five radians per second. Again, no direction, uh, times one meter, which is the radius of A over three meters, which is the radius of B. Again, we get the same as we can got before, five over three uh, radians per second. And again, this is also equal to omega C because we said it's a rigid body, okay? Um, so this is just an alternate method. Um, you, again, you get the same solution. This is derived um, from these um, cross product uh, vector equations. So now let's move on to gear C. Um, so gear C, um, we said has the same omega as omega B. So we're going to write that down nicely. Omega C is equal to omega B. And we can, again, use the same ratio formula that we used before because I've already showed how the um, vector equation, which takes longer, works. Um, is going to be omega D over omega c equals to rc over rd, the ratio of the radii. And then we can uh, solve for omega d here. Omega d is equal to the absolute value of omega c times rc over rd, sorry, uppercase d. And again, we can solve for omega d by plugging in the numbers, which is going to be equal to um, 5 over 3 radians per second times 0 0.5 meters divided by 1.5 meters. So these are the radii. This is going to give us 5 over 9 radians per second. And so the final answer, this is what we wanted. We were looking for the angular velocity at uh, of gear D. It's going to be equal to 5 over 9 radians per second.
and this is the final answer. Let's add a box to it, and we're done.